Hello and welcome back to this session. In the previous few session, we have already discussed about the CubeMX and its functionality. In the previous lecture, we have generated a code for LED blink. Now we'll focus on STM32 Cube IDE. As I told earlier also that the CubeMX functionality is integrated in STM32 Cube IDE. So in this session, we'll generate a code for controlling LED with the onboard user button. So let's get started. Open Cube IDE. So this is the welcome page of STM32 Cube IDE. You can see that there is three tab start new STM32 project, start new project from CubeMX file or import a SW4 STM32 or 2 Studio project. So with the first tab, you can create the project as we have did in LED Blink. That means this will open the CubeMX and you will have to follow the same process for the pinout configuration, clock configuration as well as project manager tab. In the second tab, suppose you have created a project file using CubeMX. So you would start now with CubeID. So you can directly import that project file and the code will be generated here. And in the third section, it is used for import a project that is generated using system workbench for STM32 or True Studio project. Like in the toolchain section, I have mentioned that there are multiple toolchains supported by the Cubemx. So maybe the previous code will be generated in True Studio or system workbench for STM32. And now you would like to switch on Cube ID so you can import that project in this IDE also. You can also import those projects in Cube ID. So let's start new STM32 project. It will ask for internet connection. You can just click no and wait for the initialization of STM32 target selector. Now you can see the same pop-up window opens here like it was in case of CubeMX. So you can go to board selector tab, type our target board that is Nucleo F401RE. So this is the board. Click next. Now the window opens for project setting. You can give the name of the project. Let's say I'm giving user LED. This is the default location that I'm using. Remember when we launched the cube ID for the first time, we have set a workspace location. So this is that default location. If you do not remember the path, you can uncheck this and browse for your desired directory. Option targeted language. I'm using C binary type. We want an executable file and target project type is STM32 cube. So finish now as we have clicked to initialize the peripheral in default mode in the cube mx same thing is here also click yes now it will initialize the device configuration tool now as you can see the pinout and configuration wizard opens similar like cube mx you can close this console window now we need to proceed same as we did in cube mx now we have to remove all this initialized setting go to pinout select clear pinouts and click yes now this mcu is blank now and all the configuration has been disappeared. Now we need to enable a button and an LED. So remember the pin for LED that was PA5. This is the pin. Click on this pin and configure it as GPIO output. If you need, you can rename it by right clicking and enter user label. Let's say LED. Fine. Now we need to enable the user button. Now on what pin the user button is connected? We need to go back to the user manual in the user manual, scroll down in the content section and just we have look for LEDs. Now there is push button section next to it. Click on this and you will redirect it to the page of push button. As you can see, there are two buttons, button B1 and B2. B1 is user button which is connected to input output PC13 and button 2 is reset button that will be used to reset the controller. Now if you go to page number 64, you will find the schematic and this is the section of user button. If you zoom this, you can see the PC13 is connected to user button blue, which is B1. So this is the button configuration. It is connected to VDD and when we press the button, it will connect to reset. That's all we need to know. Come back to cube IDE and look for pin number PC13. So this is the pin. Click on this pin and configured as GPIO input. Since button is an input device, you have to configure this as GPIO input. Right click on the pin and enter user label. Let's say I'm giving button. Now enable the clock, go to RCC in the A to Z peripheral, select HSE as bypass clock source. Now go to GPIO peripheral. You will see these two pins that we have enabled 
are in the list. So there are three configuration parameter for PC30. Number one is mode that is input mode. Next is pull up or pull down. If you want to configure the pull up or pull down, you can do this from the drop down menu. If you are enabling pull up, then by default, the button will be high. And when you press it, it will connect to ground. Similarly, if you configure it as pull down, then by default button will be low and when you press the button, it will be high. So you can configure the any mode right now. I am configuring a pull down. So we are done with the configuration. Go for the clock configuration, select the HSE source, type the maximum frequency that is 84 megahertz and hit enter. The clock issue is resolved now. Project manager, you have already given the name. Tool chain you need not to select because you are working in the cube IDE itself. So you can see there is no any options to generate code. So simply you can go to file and click save. Saving the project will generate the code structure. As you can see the folder structure gets updated. The one folder with core and drivers comes into picture. Now open the core and you will find all the folders that were in generated code structure. So this is the source file. You can see the GPIO configuration has been imported here. GPIO pin button which is configured as input mode and in pull down configuration. Now in order to add R code we need to look for the functions and driver as we did in the LED blinking. Go to driver folder, HL drivers, go to include folder and look for GPIO.h. Double click to open the file. So this is GPIO.h. If you scroll down you will find the input output operation function. This is the function to read a pin. If you read the pin, then you will get the value of type GPIO pin state, which is GPIO pin reset if it is low and GPIO pin set if it is high. We need to create a variable of this type. So copy GPIO pin state, go to main.c, look for the private variable definition section. This is for private include. This is for private type definition and this is the section where private definition. You can write any of this above section like here this is private variable so you can even enter here also paste and give the name of that variable. Let's say I'm giving button state. I have created a variable button state of type GPIO pin state. Now again get back to this function GPIO read bin. Copy this function and come back to main.c. Go to main function and after all the configuration in the while loop, paste the code. So we will be reading the pin and storing the state of the pin in button state variable that we have created just now. So we can write button underscore state equal to HAL GPIO read pin. Now the first parameter that it takes is the GPIO port. So we have enabled PC13. So it corresponds to GPIO C. Similarly, the pin number on which pin we have enabled the button. So we have enabled the button pin. As we have renamed those pins, so we have to give the name of that pin. If we leave the pin as it is, then we can use the default macros defined for each pin number. If you scroll up in this .h file, you will see the macros defined for pin number. Like we have enabled PC13. So we can directly write here HLGPIO read GPIO C and GPIO underscore pin underscore 30. I hope you get that. So you can add the comment. This will return the state in this line will returns the state of button because we are reading the pin that what's the state what is the state of that pin if button state is equal to gpio underscore pin underscore set start curly brackets now we are testing the button state that means after reading the pin it will hold the state of the button whether it is high or low so we have configured it is pull down. So by default, it will be in low state. Now we have to compare the if button state is in high state, then we have to turn on the LED and to turn on the LED, we will again copy the function like as we did in LED blink, which is the function to write logic. 
copy this function gpio write pin go to main.c and paste here remove the parameters and add the actual parameter we would like to turn on the led so we'll write gpio pin set make sure to write everything in caps for the pin we have mentioned led so it is led underscore pin with only p capital next is port so we have port a for led that is pa5 which correspond to port a now you will be wondering that where we are getting this parameter the led pin the button pin as we have configured the name as button and led so by default the as per macros the pin is automatically defined so if you would like to see you can scroll down and you will find in the gpio initialization function that the pin is selected as led pin and button pin so you have to write this only so this function will turn on the led okay so if button state is high that means button is pressed so we will turn on the led else we will turn off the led so copy the above code line and paste it here now we will turn off the led and send a low logic by gpio pin underscore reset so that's all for the code this line the button state i that is button don't forget to add the comments because it will help you in future to understand the line of codes that you have writing now before we go to the compilation we need to modify this code because there is one mistake in this as we have seen in schematic by default the button is connected to vdd that means by default the button will be in set condition so we need to change this to reset that is when button is pressed the state of the button is reset so if button state is equal to gpr pin reset then led will turn on so you can modify this so when we press the button it will read low logic that is gpr pin reset now go to project and click on build all in the console window you will see the building logs the code compiled with zero error and zero warning once the code compiled successfully we can take the target board again connected with the system using usb a2 mini b cable and go to run debug as stm32 cortex and c c++ application this will download the code to the target board and at the same time the perspective of the window changes to debug window now click resume to run the code and you can see in the board that by default led is off that means button is not pressed so if you press the button you will see the led will turn on so press the user button multiple time to see whether the code is functioning proper or not so as you can see whenever we press the button the led turns on we are done with output configuration as well as input configuration remember one thing just close all the files and you can close the project or simply delete the project do not put a check mark on this that will delete project content on disk which cannot be undone so you can simply delete and click ok without checking this box because if you check this box this project will be deleted from your folder so if you click ok the folder will be removed from this ide but the complete code will be in the directory now just click on this information center so that whenever we create a new code we get a clean window that's all for this session thank you